we are on the twelfth session. Let me acknowledge with gratitude the singer. Her name is Uma Mohan, and there's a CD you can get called the Upanishads. All the major Upanishads are covered there, and these are pulled out of that CD. What does this mantra mean? May my speech be based on my mind. May my speech be integral with what I think. May my mind be based on my speech. May there be complete resonance between what I think and what I say. May the self effulgent reveal to me. May my mind and speech help me realize the truth of the Vedas. May not what I have heard forsake me. May I study continuously, day and night. I speak about the divine truth. I speak about the absolute truth. May that protect me. May that protect the teacher. You practice it, you protect the teacher as well. Okay, this is an ancient prayer. Uh, in the last session, we couldn't complete karma and karta. And today, we'll cover the rest of the gunas. We'll also look into purification and transformation of the gunas. Very important topic today. We had covered jnana, which really pointed to the impulsion to do work, the knowledge behind doing work. Now we look at work, work proper, karma. But before we do that, let's get some good guesses from you. What do you think is sattvic karma? What is rajasic karma? What is tamasic karma? Sattvic karma is based on a sense of duty. By the way, if you have noticed throughout this, I have carefully avoided the word duty. Most people interpret dharma as duty. Karyam karma, work that needs to be done. Oh, that is a that's very broad entity because when we do work as a duty, uh, sometimes there is a connotation we really do not want to do that work. We are doing it because we have to do it. That is karma yoga does not deal with any work of that kind. That means it is an obligation, you are kind of compelled to do it uh, to satisfy your moral conscience. Uh, but you are right, a lo lot of work we do for that sake, okay, including sometimes attending class. Okay, but what is sattvic karma? Any other suggestions? You work for the sake of others, okay. But fundamentally, karma yoga is all about what? Detaching yourself from the fruit of action. So, do not forget the larger context. It is karma yoga. Okay, what is, so what is rajasic karma? Total attachment. So, I am asking you, the Gita is asking you, look at your own work. You are doing work. Even when you are not doing work, you are doing work because you can't sit idle. What is the kind of work you are doing? That is all we are asking. What do you think is tamasic karma? Destructive, huh? Destructive work. 
give me an example of destructive work that you do tell me do you do tamasic karma or not we all do different kinds of karma including tamasic give me an example of tamasic karma Maybe watching, movies. watching movies is bad geeta doesn't tell that huh? procrastination you again shifted your position huh? you didn't get you can pull one chair no problem procrastination yes that's a good one that's the most familiar one no procrastination coming late to class is it tamasic karma yes. simple example becoming dull in what you are doing tamasic karma doing things mechanically mechanically routinely you don't even put your heart and soul you doing something including sitting in class my friend okay you have also gone back tamas is actually a, a strong component in back benchers uh, tamas is also deluding you understand you think nobody is seeing actually you are you are being seen by your the divine inside you <laughs> yourself but you don't even you are not conscious of it you think it's okay so tamas also includes a high degree of delusion and you know there's a lot of persistence in the delusion so even if you want to correct yourself tamas prevents you from changing so you have to be alert to all that and for that you need lot of mindfulness niyatam sangarahitam aragadveshatah kritam अफल प्रेप्सुना कर्म यत्यत्सात्विक मुच्यते। That action is said to be sattvic, which is यत्तत्सात्विकम् उच्यते, which is well regulated, well regulated and free of attachment, as you rightly said. नियतम् संगरहितम् नियतम् कर्म, where you have नियम्या, you have control. Performed without attraction or aversion, a raga dveshata kritam, by one not craving for the fruit of action, a phala prepsuna karma. The whole of karma yoga is covered in this. There may be a few actions we do which belong to this category, but by and large, it's very rare to find someone do all actions like this, and that person would never use the word duty. A duty is sometimes relevant, but not a word to be used in this context. Niyatam sangarahitam araga dveshata. Araga, no extreme attachment to the work you do, nor revulsion. That's a sthita pratnya state, very high state, very advanced state. Okay, so let me see. Sattvic action is that which is based on an impersonal sense of duty and a clear conviction of the work to be done, based on one's swadharma, regardless of the fruit of action. The rest of it is here in this verse. So I am going to quickly cover the guna. So we will go to the next one. Afala prepsuna is a key one. You are not looking at the outcome of the fruit of action. Classically, all our works are totally conditioned and dependent on the fruit of action. What is it in it for me? This is the first question you will ask before you do anything. Here you do not ask that question. Even if you are writing an exam, you just do your best. The result is not in your hand and it is okay one way or the other. And apparent failure is also okay. Why? Failure can happen due to many reasons. If you have done your best and you have still failed, you are practicing karma yoga. But you are not cheating. You are not going to depression. You are cool. Hmm? There is a beautiful word in the Gita. Nitya Tripta Nirashraya in the fourth chapter. Nirashraya, what do you think that word means? Nirashraya. Huh? Not being dependent on any external 
circumstance for your happiness, for your tripti. Uh, is there anything like that in your life? Is not everything depend on some external circumstance? Would you wish anyone to be nirashraya? Nirashraya commonly also means being helpless, not having any support, not having any shelter, not having any refuge. Hmm? Let's say you fall sick and you're alone. You really feel, the, you know, you you feel the depths of depression, loneliness, lack of support, uh, but not a Sita Pratnya, because Sita Pratnya is constantly feeling a support, not dependent. You know the divine will manifest in multiple different ways, not the ways you want the divine to manifest. So, Nirashraya, it's a strange thing to wish, but that's what Krishna is asking Arjuna to practice not having your happiness dependent on external circumstance it's stupid because the external circumstance is governed by so many factors secondly you do it in the hope that you will be happy but that happiness will be transient it is dependent on the external condition that external condition is asat it is subject to change and so you are at the mercy of external circumstance. You suffer from the vicissitudes of life. That's how all our happiness is. Uh, and this is a huge shift from that. Nirashraya, which means totally independent of any external support. All the support you want is already there with you in yourself. A self-realized person behaves like that. And it's a wonderful way to live and die. How many of us can die like that? Welcome death with a smile. Nirashraya. Uh, it's not easy. So, again there are verses in the Gita which says, how you die is also determined by how you live. What you think of at the moment of death governs what happens later, but that is totally dependent on what you have given priority to in your life, day to day life. If you have lived to become a Sita Pratnya, that will be with you all the way to the end and that radiance will be there. You won't go crying or you know in, in a bad mood. Total freedom from external circumstance. Very desirable state, you would say, but very difficult unless you have done your sadhana. So the Gita is very clear. Arjuna says, how is it possible? It's difficult. The mind is so fragile, so restless, so balavat, so rigid, so obstinate. So Krishna says, yes it is, I agree with you, but still it can be done. It can be done with the help of two things, what is that? We have done that verse. Abhyasa, right, what is Abhyasa? Practice, daily practice, meditation practice, karma yoga practice, Abhyasa. Second one is? Vairagya, perfect. What is Vairagya? Detachment. Every time you should say to yourself, when you find yourself depending on something for your happiness, I can live without it happily. Can you do that? Let go. Hmm? I can live with it. My happiness is not so much dependent on this outcome. I can live with it. I am happy just the way things are. That's a practice. That's an abhyasa. Not so desperately cling and then go to tears if things don't work out, or over celebrate, uh, which is our normal, which is our training, we have been kind of, uh, kind of brainwashed into living that life, uh, not seeing the higher life. Okay, so let us see now what Rajasik Karma is. Yattu kame psuna karma, saham karena vapunaha, kriyate bahulayasam, तद्राज समुदाहृतम्
That action is said to be rajasik, which is tat rajasam udahritam, performed by one craving to gratify desires, yat tu kama ipsuna karma, driven by selfishness to gain possession, sa ahankarena vapunaha, and thus motivated to apply great effort, kriyate bahula ayasam. It's a classic carrot and stick approach which you find in the corporate world. So, if something is very attractive, including getting admission to IIT, you will do all that is needed to, uh, to get it, right? Not only you, everybody in the family, the coaching centers, you will be solving 10,000 problems in physics, uh, you will be tired out. You will do anything, yes or no, to get what you want if the prize is attractive enough, yes or no. That is great effort. But if you do not get it and if your neighbor gets it, you are finished. <laughs> you get it, but then the thrill of it wanes when you enter IIT and you find all the guys are, are ditto like you. But then in the class, in when you start, when the first quiz results come out, you again get deflated. Yes or no? This is our common experience. So, what a life where we are subject to and tossed by, uh, by the tidal waves of circumstances. But great effort is needed. Now, by the way, nature has created the guna of rajas precisely for this. Because only this way you train yourself. Your abhyasa is of this kind. You do not know any other kind of abhyasa. But that is not bad. That is better than being lazy and not exerting yourself and not stretching yourself physically, vitally, mentally. So, this is serving a purpose. At some stage, now, you come through IIT, you should wake up and say, I should use my energy more judiciously, hmm, with more discrimination. And so, you can easily do this way. This is the way everybody lives. But you look around, you look at people who are employed. Are they really living fulfilled lives? You have to ask this question. You say, no. I saw a movie last night along with my wife. It is called Bye Bye Love. Have you seen any of you have seen that? See it. Bye Bye Love. <laughs> bye Bye. There is a famous song. No? Bye Bye Love. Bye Bye Happiness. It is a story of people in the western world, in the US, where everybody, every character except one is married, divorced several times and the kids are there and you will find them. What? And they are well off. What a superficial life is being lived. Life totally governed by prayers. Uh, but that is the same direction we are also moving in, you know, we are also moving in. Now, perhaps it is necessary to go in that direction to discover, you know, we are wasting our lives. And then wake up and say, there is a better way of living. What is that better way of living? You have to discover. Okay, so, Rajasik karma is commonplace, even in the most successful institutions worldwide. The incentive for the work is provided by the fruit of action which one craves for. When the object of desire is seen to be really worthwhile, one tends to put in great effort and passionate labor. There is a strong ego sense of doership underlying the action. You will find this, <laughs> even people who have studied the Gita, who uh, this is something very difficult for anyone to let go of. IIT Madras has now been ranked number one among, uh, I do not know, 3,500 or 4,000 engineering colleges, big deal. But we all feel that we did it, right? We like to talk about it. Um, it is good. I think it is good we have done that. But the underlying notion that it has happened because of great effort that we put in is a delusion. Ahankara vimudhatma 
kartaham iti manyate. This is true of the greatest scientists, researchers. We are dumb. This is what Prakriti is doing. And you are lucky this time. How, how many times can you be lucky? And if someone does better, what's your problem? It's the same divine manifesting in different. So I don't, uh, this mindless competition, this rat race, this RG that we guys suffer from, relative grading, is actually totally untempered rajas. The problem with that kind of motivation is, we are not going to play straight. If you want to be number one, it's a game, you know, it's a number game. We'll play a number game, everybody is playing a number game and not all numbers are right and many things cannot be quantified. Some institutions are said to be number one in overall education. What is overall education? If this is not part of overall education and this cannot be measured and this is not taught anywhere else, what is overall education? So, if you look at the standards in India at the time of several thousand years ago, Nalanda, Takshashila, Gurukula, their focus was truly overall education. Overall education is not how many papers you published and how many citation indices you got and uh, uh, what is the pay package of the students who got employed and what the public perception is. Overall education is a sense of movement from tamas to jyoti, from asat to sat, from mrityu to amritam. It's how much we have progressed in the evolutionary path, how close we are in moving from prayers towards shreyas and moving ahead. Fundas were very clear there and understanding notions of doership were very clear. But if you take that as a standard and I will take that as a standard. Let us say some of us feel that we have been reincarnated in this life and we have seen that life. You will say, well, we are somewhere there, long way to go, yes or no and you know it. If you really understood the Gita, you know it. But it is meant to be this way right now, we accept it gracefully. How do we elevate ourselves, at least some of us? We have been trying in these courses, we are at least hopeful that maybe 25 percent of the class will really go deeper into this over many years. But we know for many it is difficult. We know for sure backbenchers cannot, we will come to that because tamas is difficult, you know, it kind of, it does something to us. I want to quote uh, a story that I heard some time back from Eckhart Tolle. You have heard of Eckhart Tolle? You must read his book called The Power of Now. So he says in Vancouver, near his place there is a lake where a lot of people visit and in the lake there are some ducks. There is an old man sitting in a bench alone and he is feeding the ducks, okay, simple thing and he is enjoying it. And then two kids, two uh, boy scouts come, park their cycles, pause and say, excuse me sir, we should tell you this, please do not feed the ducks, it is unhealthy for the ducks. And they give a big scientific explanation that what is being given is not good for the health of the ducks. This man pauses, did, do you know sir, did, did you know this sir? Yes, thank you, he says. And it is a true story and Eckhart Tolle is watching this incident. They go off, but he goes back to feeding the ducks. And that is that's an eye opening thing. So, you will find that, uh, you will find that even if you know what is the right thing to do, something prevents us and we keep doing the same old thing. We kind of helplessly do it. That is exactly how tamas operates. I will say there is a backbencher tamasic peer pressure which acts. Half the problem is the cell phone. 
you have the book open i don't know and then there's a cell phone there and actually you're waiting for for something the distraction is you know is what you've been trained to they say now studies have shown that the cell phone message actually fires dopamine in your brain and then you actually look forward to that we kind of train ourselves to do the, doing this now perhaps if we were in school we would say remove all the cell phones and pay attention but then you're going to real life where there's no one to bring those rules you have to apply those rules yourself you will find it's difficult to do especially when guys around you are doing that so if you find the culture you yourself tell me the culture in your hostel in your daily life is it tamasic is it rajasic it is satvik do you are you able to discriminate and can you not see how helpless you are and how brainwashed you are and how stupid you are and how powerless you are how your karma is not in your control and you claim to have the best education in the country if not the world it's a joke ask yourself so the whole purpose of the gita is to make you ask. now you will ask yourself and in your assignments you will write the right thing but you're like the old man who will still go on <laughs> feeding the ducks you're actually feeding tamas and rajas in your system think about it there is a strong sense of ego sense of doership underlying the action and a strong sense of possessiveness in the object attained reflective of the rajasic ahankara this forms the basis of the carrot and stick approach widely adopted in management because it is likely to bear fruit if the employees are rajasic in character you will find if you've got people at the satvik level you can't bribe them with this carrot and stick they will do but they will play rules by their you know the, the, they decide the rules of their game and they'll make the greatest researchers and scientists in your organization but allow them to do what they what say in a calling what say in a swara that's good leadership sadly the happiness gained by such action is usually short lived and is easily threatened by the perception that somebody else is getting something more how fragile equally there is much ego pain in failure let's look at tamas anubandham kshayam hinsam anaveksha cha paurusham mohadarabhyate karma yat tat tamasam uchyate that action is said to be tamasic which is yat tat tamasam uchyate undertaken out of delusion without care mohat arabhyate karma and concern about one's own competence anapeksha cha paurusham or consequences loss or injury to others anubandham kshayam himsa so you end up uh, in real life you end up taking up projects that <laughs> without checking whether you have the competence to do it right because of the greed for doing it or the sheer habit of doing it sheer habit is more and then you make a mess of it and then uh, you shamelessly move on and repeat the same thing many of us do this doing it once in a while is okay it's actually good because you know your limits and you can stretch your limits so but when it becomes a habit it's a problem all of us at some time or other tend to accept work mindlessly that's tamas without recognizing whether or not we have the competence to do such work if this is an occasional occurrence for example biting more than we can chew in terms of projects then it could simply serve as a useful lesson as we move on with our lives however for tamasic people there is no such learning and such actions are routinely done out of delusion moha without care or concern for the consequences there can be much wastage and loss arising out of such misplaced labor so the example i gave you is a classic example sheer habit and delusion okay summary satvik karma is related to the work that needs to be done in a well regulated way without attachment desire or aversion not focus on the fruit 
Rajasic action is driven by desire to gain some personal reward with great effort to attain the fruit and strong sense of doership and possessiveness. Tamasic action is undertaken out of delusion without care or concern about one's own existence or damaging consequences to others.